Okay, so testing the headlight control module and its wiring is actually fairly straightforward. So this is your headlight control module. Once we've removed it, we have these two connectors. This large one is all of the power that comes from your headlight switch. And this smaller one sends the power from the control module to your headlight pop-up motors. So we're going to be testing the large connector so that we can inspect the power coming from the switch, the headlight switch. In order to do this, we're going to take our multimeter and we're going to set it to DC voltage. Our black probe is going to be on the COM port and our red probe is going to be on the volts and ohms setting. So I'll take my negative lead and I'm going to connect a alligator clip to it just to make it a little bit easier and then I'm going to connect the other side of the alligator clip down to the negative terminal of the battery. Now if we look at the large connector in this orientation with the tab on the top, from right to left we have the headlight pop-up control pin. This one goes uh, live to 12 volts once the headlight switch is flicked all the way on to turn on the pop-up headlights. So it goes from 0 to 12 volts. This is a constant 12 volt pin, so it is always at 12 volts, no matter what. The next is our running light pin. So when the headlights are switched to running light only, without the pop-up headlights on, this will go to 12 volts. Or, if we do turn on our headlights completely with the pop-ups on, this will also be at 12 volts. Our next one is a ground wire, self-explanatory, and our last one is a constant 12 volt as well. So with the headlight switch fully off, we should see zero volts or close to on the pop-up headlight pin. We should see 12 volts on the constant 12 volt pin, close to zero volts, on the running light pin, zero volts on ground, and close to 12 volts on our secondary constant 12 volt pin. If we turn the headlight switch to the running light position, we should see that the running light pin is now at 12 volts. So again, we will walk through our pop-up headlight pin is near zero. Our constant number one is at close to 12 volts. Our running light pin is now close to 12 volts. Ground is zero or close to. And our secondary constant 12 volt is also near 12 volts. Now if I take the headlight switch and I attempt to pop up the headlights, you'll see that we have 12 volts on our pop-up headlight pin. 12 volts on our constant, 12 volts on our running light pin, close to zero volts on ground, and 12 volts or near on our secondary constant. If we have all of these values that are close to that, that means that our switch controls are working really well. Now we need to look into the headlight motor circuitry. 
So if everything is good on the switch side, we're going to start looking into the wiring heading towards our motors. Now that's the small connector here. And in order to test that, we're going to need to take our dial and switch it over to ohms. This is going to measure resistance. Uh, yours may have a manual range that you can select from. Anything under a thousand ohms will be acceptable. 200 ohms is fine if you have that setting. Um, we're going to disconnect our negative probe from the negative terminal of the battery so we have it free. And if you look at the small connector in this orientation with the well tab facing the top, mine is broken. Um, on the right hand side, these two pins that are next to each other, these are your two wires that lead to your passenger side motor. And these two wires lead to your driver side motor. If you applied a positive voltage here and a negative voltage here, the passenger side motor would spin one direction. If you reverse polarity and put positive here and negative here, the opposite would occur. This is a good test for the motors just to make sure that the motors function. Just quickly tap the power to it so that you pulse the motor a little bit. Try not to hold power to it completely, otherwise when it tops out at the bottom or the top, it will begin putting more strain on the internal wiring. So try not to move the motors too much. So what we're looking for here is the resistance of the internal windings of the motor and also the resistance of the wires leading to the motor. So if I connect one probe to this pin, that's the passenger side wire number one, and then I connect the probe to passenger side wire number two, we're going to be looking for somewhere above zero ohms. We're hoping for probably around that five to maybe seven ohm mark. Um, this one is a little older and it's pretty worn out. That's why we're getting such a low resistance rating. What this low resistance rating is showing me is that it's actually drawing more current from the control unit. If the resistance is close to zero, that means we have direct contact between the two wires. We don't want that because that's a dead short. So we're checking for that specifically here and Right now we have a little over one ohm, which is, that's an old tired motor. And the next one on the driver's side, it's a little closer to two. Again, old, tired, they're still the original motors. What happens is that you have a coil of wires that's very, very long, and each time you wrap the coils around each other to make the coil, uh, the internal wires are separated by a resistive layer. Now, as the motors get hot and they get used a lot, those resistive layers, the sheathing, is actually just a very light enamel, kind of like a clear coat, and it starts to wear down and then these wires start to touch. And you get one little section where the resistance is now collapsed and you have zero resistance there. That over time, as you start collapsing more and more of the rounds of the coil, it starts lowering and lowering the resistance from where a fresh motor is maybe seven ohms, you start working your way slowly down to one ohm, which is what I have, and it draws more current. 
So it, it's more taxing on all of the control systems, but it also produces less power. So it draws more power from the control unit, but it spins slower. So this is what happens with your window motors. They start to really tax the switches and they draw a lot of power, but now your switch is trying to provide lots of power to a window that is barely moving. So that's why it's best to replace these motors after some time. Now, if you have anything below one ohm here, or significantly close to zero, now that's the time where you need to start checking your wiring from this plug down to your headlight motors and start inspecting to try to find where you have a bit of a short. Now, a second test, we want to make sure that these motors are not connected to ground or the frame in any way. So what we're going to do, you can take your one of your probes, we're going to use the, the black negative probe and we're going to just hook an alligator clip to it and we will connect it directly to the vehicle negative terminal. So once we have connected our black lead to the negative terminal of the battery, we're just going to test that we have a proper connection to the terminal of the battery. So if I take this pin, this lead, and I touch it to the ground, it's going to create a dead short, which should be zero or close to zero ohms. If I can get good contact, close enough. Okay, so when we test these motors, we want to touch each one of these terminals, and we don't want to see any values come up. That means that none of these contacts are at all connected to the frame. That's perfect. If we do, that means there's a short between one of these wires and the body of the car. We need to look into that. If you do have some abnormal values showing up on your motor connector, you're going to want to start tracing the wires back to the motor to try to isolate where the issues are. If you find that it's actually a fault inside the motor itself, you're going to have to replace the motors. If the fault is not in the motor and it is actually somewhere between this contact, this connector, and the connector that's right on the motor, that means you're going to have to start digging into the wiring harness a little bit and try to find where the issue is. 